you guys, here's another hour long class and this one is all about crows. It's gonna have side crow in it, it's gonna have crow pose, it's gonna have baby crow in it too. So super fun stuff for today's class. You don't need any props um, unless you want a block or a bolster. Um, let me think, what else is there? Of course, everything as always that I offer today in class is merely a suggestion, something you decide to take or not, depending on how your body is feeling and what your breath is telling you to do. So just take what you want, dig deeper when you want, and try something new, or just lay in Shavasana or a restorative pose for as long in class as you wish to. Um, you won't hurt my feelings either way. Uh, and I think that's it. Hey guys, here is another hour long class and this one is going to be about all the crows. It's going to have crow pose in it, it's going to have side crow in it, and it's going to have baby crow in it if you want to try that pose out. As always, everything that I offer today in class is merely a suggestion that you can decide to take or not depending on how your body is feeling and what your breath is asking you to do. So take rest when you need it, dig deeper and try something new when you want to, but don't push your limits if that's not what your body wants today. Um, you don't need any props unless you want a block or a bolster to either lay on at the end of class or to help you out with your crow pose or your baby crow pose to put your feet on. Also, be prepared for a ton of twists. That's kind of the name of the game when it comes to side crow is getting your spine all warmed up. So yeah, that is that. So go ahead and make your way into a nice comfortable seated position here on your mat, closing your eyes, growing that crown of your head up towards the sky here. And closing your eyes. Beginning to let your day go. Beginning to forget about that to-do list. Forget about anything that happened before or after class tonight. Or today. Today. It's not nighttime. It's today. And anything that may or may not happen later on tonight. Or later on in your day. Just call your attention here to your body and to your breath. Growing the crown of your head up towards the sky. Palms face down on your knees for grounding energy. Palms face up towards the sky for receiving energy. Not doing any sort of specific pranayama today before class, but just sitting here, breathing, simply being. That will be our pranayama. And then go ahead and inhale, reach your hands all the way up to the sky. Big stretch up and as you exhale, take your hands out to your heart space, closing your eyes if you already haven't done so. Take a moment here, set an intention for your practice today. Maybe think of a mantra, one word help to help you move and flow. Maybe you think about whatever brought you here onto your mat today. And just keep that in mind throughout your practice. And then go ahead and inhale, sweep your hands all the way up to the sky. Big stretch up. And as you exhale, pull your hands down to your heart space. Taking a second here to seal in your intention, to seal in your mantra. And then go ahead and take a big breath in. And as you exhale, either keeping your eyes closed or maybe you flutter them open. Rock, up between, rock up into a nice, comfortable tabletop position here. And let's inhale, belly drops, gaze lifts. And as you exhale, round your back. And inhale, belly drops, gaze lifts. As you exhale, round your back. And then inhale, make your way back to neutral. As you exhale, sink your hips backwards, your heels coming to sit on your heels here. We're going to start with a gentle twist here. And I know this can be uncomfortable on your thighs, this deep stretch. So if you want to take a crisscross applesauce position, you are more than welcome to. But let's inhale, reach your hands all the way up, big stretch up. And as you exhale, take your right hand to the outside of your left knee here and gaze back behind you. Left hand can rest on the mat. For three, two, one. Unwind. Inhale, lift your hands all the way up, taking a big breath in. As you exhale, take your left hand to the outside of your right knee here, twisting. Then you to take a big breath in as you exhale, slowly unwind. Inhale, reach your hands all the way up towards the sky. As you exhale, interlace your hands, press your palms all the way up. Take a big breath in as you exhale, bring your hands down in front of you. Good. Bring your hips still in and then inhale, lift all the way up. And as you exhale, bring that hand down. Three more, just like that. Inhale, lift. 
exhale lower inhale lifting up exhale lowering inhale lift exhale lower and then inhale lift up as you exhale rock back up onto your hands and knees tabletop position inhale belly drops gaze lifts exhale roll your spine up cat pose inhale belly drops gaze lifts cow and exhale, roll out your spine, cat pose. And then go ahead, make your way into a nice neutral tabletop position. Walk your hands up, palms with distance forward here. Tuck your toes, lift your back knees. Downward facing dog, we meet. Bending one leg and then the other here. Maybe you sway those hips of your side to side. Or maybe you fall into stillness. Actively pressing both heels down towards the earth. And then go ahead, inhale all the way up under your tippy toes. And as you exhale, tiptoe all the way up to the mat. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthening. Exhale, bow. Inhale, reverse one. I've all the way up to standing hands coming to touch. As you exhale, pull your hands down to your heart space. And then inhale, hands reach high. As you exhale, hinge forward, forward fold. Take an inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. As you exhale, bow forward, put your hands on the mat and step your right leg long back behind you. Your right knee is going to come down to the earth. Inhale, hands reach up. Low classical lunge here, moving through your classical sun self. Take a breath in as you exhale, hinge forward, plant your hands on the mat, step back, high plank. Knees stay up or knees go down, lower down, low plank. Inhale up, upward facing dog. Exhale, push your back. Adamuka, down facing dog. And then inhale, right leg goes high as you exhale, pull your right knee in towards your nose, plant your right foot down on the mat. Left knee falls and inhale, hands go all the way up towards that sky. Good. Breathe in here. Let's take a breath as you exhale, fold forward, point your hands down the mat, step your left foot up to meet your right, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. Exhale, bow. Inhale, reverse one, of all up to standing hands, going to touch. As you exhale, pull your, your hands down to your heart, pause. Inhale, hands reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. As you exhale, bow forward, point your hands down the mat, reach your left leg long back behind you, left knee follows, inhale, hands go high. And options for hands, step towards the sky, or maybe you interlace your hands across your right thigh here. Taking a breath in as you exhale, bow forward, planting your hands on the mat. Let's step back, high plank, Vanasa through. Meet me in downward facing dog. And then inhale, reach your left leg all the way up towards the sky, taking a breath in as you exhale, pull your left knee in towards your nose, plant your left foot down the mat, right knee follows, and inhale, hands go high. Reaching your hands all the way up towards the sky. Hands can come down onto your left thigh and you can interlace them if you wish. Breathing for three, two, one. Exhale, bow forward, put your hands on the mat, step your right foot forward to meet your left forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthening. Exhale, bow. Inhale, reverse one, I've all up to standing hands going to touch. As you exhale, pull your hands under your heart space. And then inhale, hands go high. As you exhale, bow forward, forward fold, changing it up here. Take a breath in as you exhale, step your right leg long back behind you. Keep your right knee lifted here. Low runner's lunge. Actively pressing your right knee up towards the sky, left hip pulls back. Right hip pulls forward, taking a bark and sun sal here, doing the first sun sal that we normally warm up in, in the hot sets. Take a breath in as you exhale, step back, high plank. Knees stay higher, knees go down, take a breath in as you exhale, lower down, low plank. Inhale up, upward facing dog. As you exhale, push your hips back towards the sky. Anamukha, downward facing dog. And if you're familiar with that bark and lineage and you want to take two chaturangas, two push-ups, go for it. I won't stop you. Inhale, right leg goes up. As you exhale, pull your right knee towards your nose, plant your right foot down that low runner's lunge. Good. And if you want to take two push-ups anyways, go for it. Do your double chaturanga. But if you're not feeling the double chaturanga, you don't have to do it. I know it's extra challenging. Take a breath in as you exhale. Step your left foot forward to meet your right forward. Fold. Hands come together. Touch. Inhale. Rolling all the way up to standing. Hands going high. Option for a back bend at the top if you want it. And as you exhale, hinge forward and down. Take a breath in as you exhale. Step your left leg long back behind you. Low runner's lunge here. Right hip pulls back. Left hip pulling forward. Let's take a breath in as you exhale, step back high, plank, double chaturanga or single chaturanga, your choice. We mean your downward facing dog. And then inhale, left leg goes high, and as you exhale, pull your left knee toward your nose, plant that left foot down the mat, low runner's lunge here. Pulling your left hip back, right hip forward, hugging your belly button, up and in. Let's take a breath in as you exhale, step both feet forward to the top of your mat, forward fold, palms come together, touch, inhale, roll all the way up to standing hands, going high, Up for your baby back, but at the top if you want it. Exhale, hinge, forward and down, 
Let's take a big breath in as you exhale, step your right leg back. Single breath in as you exhale, step back, high plank. Double chaturanga or single chaturanga, your choice. Meet me in downward facing dog. And then inhale, reach your right leg up. As you exhale, pull your right knee towards your nose, point your right foot down the mat, low runner's lunge. Take a second here, pull your right hip back, left hip forward, set up your foundation. And as you're ready, plant left hand down, reach right hand up. Twisting here, low lunge with a twist. Hugging your belly button up and in. Pressing your right foot down to the mat, pressing your left toes down towards the mat. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, windmill your right hand down to the earth, and reach that left leg all the way up towards the sky. One or both hands comes to your angle to play with balance. Standing split for five, four, three, two, one. Fold, forward, forward, fold. Hands come together, touch, inhale, roll it all the way up to standing. Option for that baby back bend at the top if you want it. And as you exhale, hinge forward and down. Forward fold. Take a breath in as you exhale, step your left leg back behind you. Single inhale in and as you exhale, step back, high plank. Double chaturanga or single chaturanga, your choice. Meet me in downward facing dog. Then inhale, sweep your left leg up, and as you exhale, pull your left knee in towards your nose, plant that left foot down the mat, low runner's lunge. Set up that foundation, left hip pulls back, right hip pulls forward, and as you're ready, plant right hand down, and reach left hand all the way up towards that sky. Twisting here, gazing up towards your left thumb or down towards the mat, press your right knee up towards the sky here, lengthening out your right leg. Hugging your belly button up and in for five, four, three, two, one, windmill your left hand down and reach your right leg up towards that sky. Not counting here, just holding. Maybe you note know how when I start to count down, that changes up your practice versus how your practice goes when you know I'm not gonna count or you don't know I'm gonna count. We're gonna take a breath in. As you exhale, fold forward, forward, fold. Bring your hands together, touch and inhale. Simply roll all the way up to standing hands, rest at heart space, Tadasana. Take a moment here. Settle your breath. Reconnect to your intention. And then inhale, hands go high. As you exhale, hands forward, forward, fold. Take an inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. As you exhale, bow forward, put your hands on the mat. Step, step, or float back. Your choice. Vinasa through. Meet me in downward facing dog. Good. And let's take three breaths for ourselves here. You can hang out in down dog. You can hang out in child's pose. Or if you want to come with me, let's come into dolphin here. Prepping for baby crow pose by bringing our elbows down onto the mat. Two more breaths. We're going to inhale, fill up your lungs as you exhale. Meet me back in your downward facing dog. And then inhale, reach your right leg up towards the sky. Stack your hips, bend your right knee here, opening up your serpentine circles or whatever joint you need to. Ankle, hip, knee, your choice. And then go ahead and settle on the still. So inhale, straighten out your right leg as you exhale, pull your right knee in towards your right elbow. And then inhale, extend it back towards the sky. Exhale, right knee in towards your nose. Inhale, up towards the sky. Exhale, right knee, left elbow. Inhale to the sky. Exhale, right knee back to the left elbow. Inhale to the sky. Exhale, right knee in towards your nose. Inhale to the sky. Exhale, right knee to the right elbow. Exhale, or take it to the sky. And then inhale, as you exhale, pull your right knee in towards your nose, point your right foot down the mat. Pull yourself up and open here. Warrior two. Feet are kind of wide out of the mat, but they're in heel to arch alignment here. That's the key. Gazing out over your right hand towards the front of your mat. But if you do shift your gaze anywhere, let it be down towards your right foot. Make sure your right knee and right ankle are stacking here. You can see your right big toe because your knees are tracking out over to the pinky toe edge of your mat. And your shoulders are stacking directly above your hips. So you're not reaching super far forward or super far back. You're settled, settled right here in the middle. And let's take a breath in as you exhale, bring your hands to your lower back and release them. Inhale, knuckles down towards the earth as you exhale, hinge forward. Right shoulder coming to the inside of your right knee here. Head hanging nice and heavy, or maybe you gaze forward to the top of your mat. Neck nice and long. Your choice here. But just stretching out your shoulders here in a humble warrior to an ostrich pose. Different people call it different things. But essentially, you're in humble warrior with warrior two legs. Then go take a breath in as you exhale, swoop your right hand down to the inside of your right foot and reach your left hand all the way up towards that sky. Extend a side ankle. And you can stay here, maybe you can take you begin to take big circles up and around with your left hand and your left arm. Before you settle into stillness, actively reaching your left hand up towards the sky. Maybe you reaches reach it up towards the front of your mat. Your choice here. 
hugging your belly button up and then pressing your hips down towards the mat. And then inhale and as you exhale, scoop your left hand down towards your mat, come into a modified lizard pose so you're up on your left tippy toes. Wiggle walk your right foot all the way over to the long edge of your mat. An option here to keep your left knee lifted or maybe you drag it down to the earth. Quick lizard pose, pausing here, not going super deep, not holding for super long. And then go ahead, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, take a breath in. As you exhale, step your left foot out towards the long edge of your mat at the top. Sink your hips down, meet me in Malasana, your low yogi squat. Now we're going to be here twice. So you can take two crows if you want, or one crow, or no crows. It's totally your choice. So maybe you sit here and just hang on a nice meditative space. But if you're ready for a crow pose, take your hands down the mat, shoulder width distance apart. Wiggle, walk your feet in. So that way your feet are directly behind your wrists and bend your knees here and bend your elbows. So your elbows come, or your knees come to rest on your triceps, gazing out in front of you. And stay here, feet on the ground. Maybe you place your feet up on a block to get your hips a little bit higher, to get your feet a little bit higher. Maybe you lift one foot up and put it back down and lift the other foot up and put it back down, or maybe you lift one foot and the other foot, and then you're magically floating here in crow. Holding with your elbows super bent for five, or as bent as you want them, three, two, one. And as you're ready, come back into your malasana, step, step back. If you're in malasana, step, step back. Or maybe if you're in crow, you hop back, and we'll take an optional manasa, meeting me in downward facing dog. Let's go ahead, inhale, rock forward, high plank, and as you exhale, lower down, optional vinyasa here. Meet me in downward facing dog. Just a little extra push up, because why not? Let's inhale, lift our left leg all the way up towards the sky, stack our hips, bend our left knee, and begin to take circles at whatever joint we need to here. Ankle, hip, knee, thigh, your choice. And then go ahead, inhale, straighten out your left leg, and as you exhale, pull your left knee towards your left elbow. Inhale, extend up towards the sky. Exhale, left knee in towards your nose. Inhale to the sky. Exhale, left knee, right elbow across the body. Inhale to the sky. Exhale, back to that right elbow. Inhale to the sky. Exhale, bring it in towards your nose. Inhale to the sky. Exhale, left knee to left elbow. And inhale up towards the sky. As you exhale, pull your left knee in towards your nose. Point your left foot down the mat. Pivot your right foot between 45 degrees and 90. Rise up. Warrior two here. Settling into your pose, gazing out over that front hand. Same exact alignment cues as on the right. Feet are in one long straight line, one railroad track, hit a large alignment. Front knee sagging above front ankle. And again, I can't stress this enough. Shoulders stacking directly above your hips. So don't be reaching super far out for something in the future or super far back in your past. But be settled here, shoulders above hips, in the present and the pose. And I know that's a super yoga thing to say, but it's true. Be right here and right now in your pose. And take a breath in as you exhale, bring your hands to your lower back, interlace them. Inhale, knuckles go down, chin and chest goes up, and as you exhale, hinge toward. Left shoulder comes down to the inside of your left knee here. Stretching out your shoulders, giving them some love, warming up those wrists. Really take a breath in as you exhale, swoop that left hand down the inside of your left foot. Reach that right hand all the way up towards that sky. Good, and you can stay here. Or maybe you take those big arm swings in your extended side angle, going up and around a few times. Before you settle into stillness with your right arm straight up towards the sky, or reaching down and over towards the front of your mat, right palm faces it down towards the earth. Again, hugging that belly button up and in. Pressing your hips down towards the mat. And go ahead, take an inhale, and as you exhale, windmill your right hand down into the inside of your left foot. Wiggle, walk your left foot out and over towards the long edge of your mat. Bring that right knee down towards the earth. Lizard pose. Or maybe your right toe stays tucked and your right knee stays lift. Totally your choice here. But again, just taking some time in this lizard pose. And then go ahead, inhale, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, take a breath, and as you exhale, step your right foot up to meet your, or at the top of your mat, Malasana. Feet are not meeting together. Ignore that little cue. My bad. My B. Heels pointing in towards midline. Both heels glue down to the mat. Toes out towards the long edges of your mat here. Sit in your malasana, your low yogi squat. And again, you have that option to stay here. 
you have that option to fly and crow. Your choice. Go where you want. And if you're like, uh, crow is an old hat. I want something new. Instead of bending your elbows a whole heck of a lot to come into the crow, into crow, just bend your knees. Place your knees back on your triceps. Shift, shift, shift your weight forward until your toes lift up off the mat. To get that to work, you have to be up on your tippy toes to start before you start shifting your weight forward. And bam, just like that, you're in crane or that straight arm curl, however you like to think about it. Let's hold here in our arm balance or malasana for three more breaths. And then on your third and final exhale, find your own way back to your downward facing dog, either stepping or floating back, your choice. Taking it through an optional vadasa. Neither stay here in down dog or rock forward. Move through another vanasa. Another chaturanga. Meet me in downward facing dog. Good. Five breaths for yourself here. Doing whatever you wish. Down dog, child's pose, dolphin, your choice. And then go ahead and inhale all the way up onto your tippy toes. As you exhale, walk your hands all the way to the back of your mat. Forward fold back here. Come into ragdoll here, reaching for opposite elbows. As you begin to sway side to side, maybe shake your head yes, maybe shake your head no. And then go ahead and take a big breath in as you exhale, release your hands down towards the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. Exhale, bow. And then inhale, reverse one of all the standing hands coming to touch. As you exhale, pull your hands down to your heart. Good. And from here at the back of our mat, we're going to take a quick chair series, taking another page out of the Barkin so, uh, set. We're we'll take our Ukatasana series. So go ahead, take your arms out in front of you. Take a breath and as you exhale, plug your arms back into your shoulders. Really engage here. And just know we're going to keep our arms lifted for the next three postures. It's basically three chairs. Two modified chairs, really, and then a toe stand. So not really three chairs. Two chairs and a toe stand. But it's our, all part of our Ukatasana series. And let's go ahead and walk our feet out so they're hips width distance, which is two fists apart if you want to, ever want to bow down and measure. And let's take a breath in as you exhale, lower your hips down towards the mat. Coming into your chair pose. And like I said, no, we have basically two more leg strengtheners, two chair poses after this. So go as low as you wish here. And as low as your thighs want to go, keeping in mind that we don't want to fatigue out yet. Weights back in your heels, arms down in front of you, hug your belly button up and in. Maybe your hips go an inch lower. And we're holding here for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, drive your heels down to the mat, rise up to standing, and then inhale all the way up onto your tippy toes. Good. And take a breath in as you exhale, lower your hips down towards the mat like you're sitting on a bar stool. Now let's pick our right heel up, and then our left hip, heel up an inch higher, and lower our hips down an inch more. Maybe do that again. Heel up, heel up, hips down. Focusing here on stretching out the plantar fascia, the bottom of our feet. So as your hips go lower, your heels go lower. You've got to bring your hips up and bring your heels back up. Because the point of this pose is not how low your hip goes, but how much of a stretch your heels get. So how high your heels go. For five, four, three, two, one. One, inhale all the way back up to standing, heels come down towards the mat. Keep your arms out in front of you. If you have any sort of outstanding knee injury, please do one of the two poses we just did. But if you have strong, healthy knees, feel free to come with me by pigeon toeing your feet into midline, inhaling up onto your tippy toes, gluing those thighs together, and take a breath in as you exhale slowly. Lower your hips down towards the mat, coming into his toe stand here, resting at the bottom with your hips hovering up off of your heels. Keeping your arms out in front of you, hugging your belly button up and in. Hands can come down by your sides and rest on the mat if you really want to for, and you need them for balance. But we're here for 10, yeah, 10, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Take a big breath in as you exhale, slowly rise all the way back up to standing. Inhaling, bring your hands all the way above your head. And as you exhale, audible sigh out, forward fold. And then come into your ragdoll. Swaying side to side, shaking your head yes, shaking your head no. Your choice here. 
And then you're gonna take a big breath in as you exhale, release. Take an inhale, halfway, lift and lengthen. As you exhale, bow forward, plant your hands on the mat, walk your hands out back to your high plank. Adho Vanasa here, meet me in downward facing dog. And now if you've gone, wait, is she facing the back, what used to be the back of your mat, her mat? You are right. You stay facing the front of your mat, but I just rotated it around because we're about to do a lot of twists. And I don't feel like you guys, don't feel like it'd be beneficial for you guys to watch me do twists when I'm facing the opposite direction, if that makes any sense, when I'm not facing towards the camera. So go ahead, inhale, reach your right leg up towards the sky, stack your hips, bend your right knee, stay here with me or flip your dog, your choice. If you're staying with me, press your right shoulder and right armpit down towards the mat. If you flipped your dog, press both heels down to the mat and lift your hips up. And we're here for four, three, two, one. If you flip, come back around wall. Inhale, straight down our left or right leg. And as you exhale, pull your right knee towards your right elbow. And inhale back towards the sky. Exhale, right knee towards your nose. Inhale to the sky. Exhale, right knee to the left elbow. Inhale to the sky. Bring it back to the left elbow. As you exhale, inhale back up. In or exhale, bring your right knee in towards your nose. Inhale up towards the sky. Exhale, right knee to the right elbow. Exhale to the sky. Or inhale to the sky. And then inhale, and as you exhale, pull your right knee in towards your nose. Point your right foot down that. Low runner's lunge. Right hip pulling back. Left hip pulling forward. Let's point our left hand down and reach that right arm all the way up towards the sky. And you can stay here. This is the pose, or maybe you step back towards your side plank here, pressing your left hand down to the mat to lift your hips a little higher. Left knee can come down to the mat for support. You can splice your feet out so they're not stacking, or you can stack your feet one on top of the other. If you want to take any sort of fancy leg variation, you can. And we're here for five, four, three, two, one. If you came into that side plank, step your right foot down onto the top of your mat, low lunge with a twist. And that's all inhale, and as we exhale, let's use our right hand and left hand to pull us up to a high lunge. So not twisting here yet, but just in our high lunge. Right hip pulling back, left hip pulling forward. Hugging our belly button up and in. Let's bring that right hand to our left wrist here. Keep our hands up towards the sky, your choice. But if you're coming with me, let's take that right hand to the left wrist. Inhale, lift our arms up towards the sky, lift our sternum and our gaze, and as you exhale, tilt down over towards the right here. Stretching out our left side body, getting it prepared for a deep twist, which we'll take in a pose or two, but still keeping that big lunge bend, big crescent warrior bend here. Now let's all inhale, come back up to midline. And as we exhale, let's take our right hand back behind us, left hand out in front of us. Big twist here. It's a big high lunge with a twist. So we're not down on our low prayer twist yet. We're going to go there in a second. But we're just twisting here. And go ahead, take a breath. And as you exhale, flip your palms up towards the sky. Inhale. And exhale, take your right hand back to your left leg, taking a reverse high lunge here, reverse crescent warrior. Reaching your left hand up towards the sky. Make sure you take it back into your back bend, gazing up towards the sky or down toward your right foot here, your choice, your pose. And then inhale, come back up. And as you exhale, bring your hands to a prayer. Taking a breath and as you exhale, swoop your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. I don't know why, but that's my word today. Swoop. Pressing both feet down to the mat as you straighten out your left leg. And of course, you can always stay here. You can take a big T arms. You can always bring your back knee down on the mat for support if you wish. And you can take a half or a fall bind with your arms. I'm not going to offer that today. But it's your practice, your choice. If that back knee is lifted, go ahead, lift it back up. If you're taking your hands anywhere besides a prayer twist, bring them back down to this prayer twist. Gaze down to your right foot, shift your weight forward, take a breath. And as you exhale, step your left foot forward to meet your right, kneading knee in a twer chair with a twist. I would say the twer. Combining twist in a chair. Our chair with a twist. Knees in lines, hip in line, and maybe you open your arms up to that big T. Good. And from here, I'm gonna cue our side crow, and I'll pivot around so you can see. Good, if you're coming with me to side crow, let's take this right hand, put it down on the mat. Put a little bit bend in, or big of a bend in our knees, your choice, and adjust your hands so they're shoulder width distance apart, pressing this left elbow and left triceps into your right knee. Take a breath in as you exhale, bend your elbows and begin to hinge your weight down and over to the right. So now your left knee and left or right knee is stacked above your left elbow and your right hip is stacking on your right elbow. You can keep your feet down on the mat. Maybe you lift them up here, gazing out and over to the left, coming into your side curl. And maybe you begin to shift your right elbow out and over so that way your right hip's no longer resting on your right elbow to get into more advanced variation. 
And maybe you stay here for another breath or two. If you're in your chair, feel free to come out of your chair at any point. And we're all just going to meet in our floor below the top of the mat. No rush to get here, though. Okay. So play for a breath or two more, if you wish. But wherever, if you're in your side crow, press your hands down to the mat and pull your belly button up and in the entire time to keep your arms and core super engaged. That's super important. And to come out of the pose, you can either flop down to the mat if you want, or you can shift your weight back so your feet come back down to the earth and you come into like a modified toe stand before you make your way back up, okay? And another breath or two, just meet me here on your mat in a ragdoll. Then take an inhale, and as you exhale, release your grip. Inhale, halfway, lift, lengthen. As you exhale, bow forward. And then inhale, reverse one dive, all the way up, standing hands coming stretch above your head. As you exhale, pull your hands down to your heart. And then let's take a quick tree pose here, just grounding down in our practice. Root your left leg down, come up onto your right tippy toes, and then take your right foot somewhere on that left leg. Can be down at your ankle, can be up in your calf, can be all the way up in your left thigh if you want. You can even take the half lotus variation where you bring your right heel into your left hip crease. Excuse me. And resting at your heart, or maybe you grow your branches. Reaching your hands into whatever sort of arm variation you wish. But just resting here, hugging that belly button up and in, growing the crown of your head up towards the sky. And then inhale, let's bring our hands back to our heart and bring our right knee to center. As you exhale, send your right leg down and up to Nasana. And then inhale, swoop your hands up towards the sky. As you exhale, bring your hands down to your heart space, closing your eyes here, taking a moment to reconnect to your intention, to reconnect to your breath, and to thank yourself for everything you've been able to do today, both on and off of your mat. And for taking this time out of your day for yourself and to move. And then go ahead and inhale, swoop your hands all the way up towards the sky. As you exhale, hinge forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. As you exhale, bow forward, play your hands on the mat, step or float back, your choice. Optional Vinasa, meet me in downward facing dog. Good, and five breaths here. And once again, I'm gonna rotate around, so now I'm facing the front of my mat, because again, even though it's not the first set anymore, I'm a visual learner, so it helps me if I can see what the teacher is doing, especially when it comes to more advanced postures and like arm balance and such. And I just want to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing when it comes to these deep twists and not throughout class. Two more breaths here in your down dog and your child's pose. Maybe in your four in your dolphin pose, your choice. And then your next exhale, just meet me back in your downward facing dog. And while we'll inhale, lift up your left leg, and as you exhale, stack your hips here, bend your left knee. Stay here or flip your dog if you did so on the other side, pressing those heels down to the mat to lift your hips up towards the sky. Hugging your belly button up and in if you're just hanging out on your open hip three-legged dog. If you flipped, you're here for three, two, one. Come back around while we'll inhale, straight on our left leg, and as you exhale, pull left knee to your left elbow, and inhale out to the sky. Exhale, pull left knee towards your nose, and inhale, extend up towards the sky. Inhale, left knee, right elbow, inhale up to the sky. Exhale, left knee, right elbow, inhale to the sky. Exhale, left knee to the nose, inhale to the sky. Exhale, left knee to the right, left elbow, excuse me, inhale to the sky. And then inhale, and as you exhale, pull your left knee in towards your nose, put your left foot back down on the mat, low runner's lunge here. Left hip pulling back, right hip pulling forward, let's pull our right hand down and reach our left hand all the way up towards the sky. Taking a deep twist here, in our low lunge with a twist. And again, you can stay here, maybe you step back to your side plank, Pressing your hips up towards the sky as you starfish your right hand down on the mat here. Hugging your belly button up and in. For five, four, three, two, one. Let's all step that left foot back to the top of our mat if we took that side plank. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, take your left hand down in front of you and then swoop it up towards the sky. High lunge. Readjusting your feet here if you use a little bit too much momentum like I just did. Good. You stay here, arms up towards the sky, or maybe you take your left wrist to your left hand to your right wrist, and you inhale, gaze up, look up. As you exhale, tilt over towards the right. Breathing for three, two, 
one. Inhale, come back up towards the sky as you exhale, take that big twist, swooping, sweeping, swooping, your left arm back behind you. Right hands up in front. Good. Adjusting your stance if you're in too big of a stance like I was there, feeling like you're gonna fall. Maybe you gaze back towards your left hand or up towards your right hand, your choice, or maybe just out and over towards the sky. Still hugging your belly button up and in. Let's inhale, flip our palms up towards the sky as you exhale, reverse it back. Left hand coming to rest on your right knee as you reach your right hand up towards the sky. Chest gonna square up towards the sky as your gaze follows. Or you can gaze down towards your left leg here, pressing your left knee into your right hand the entire time. Kind of taking a reverse kind of twist here. And then inhale, come back up. As you exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Good, prayer twist, let's take a breath in as you exhale. Take your right elbow to the outside of your left knee here. Taking your high lunge with a twist. And just like last time, you can open up your arms to a T, you can take a half bind, you can take a full bind. This back knee can come onto the mat if that's better suited for you. Your choice here. But wherever you've decided to land, just land, just be. If you took a half bind or a full bind or took your arms to those big T's, go ahead, return your hands to your heart. And if you took your back knee down to the mat, go ahead, lift it, because we'll take a breath in and shift our gaze down towards our left foot. And as you exhale, step your right foot up to meet your left. Coming into your chair pose with a twist here. Knees hugging in line, hips pulling in line, sinking your hips down nice and low here in your chair. And again, option to stay here. If you wanna come with me to your side crow, let's plant our hands down onto the mat, bend our knees as much as you want or need to. Bend your elbows. Glue your right elbow into your left knee, pressing it there. And then begin to shift your weight over so that way your left elbow and left hip are coming together. Left hip resting on top of that left elbow. Good. And when you're first starting out, it's okay to have all of your weight distributed between these two elbows. But with time, you wanna shift your left hip off of your left elbow so that way all of your weight's on your right elbow. And the same thing goes when you're taking your crow pose on the other side. And again, like last time, sit here and play with crow for as long as you, side crow, for as long as you want or need to. Staying in your chair pose with a deep twist for as long as you want or need to. But then in your own time, meet me back in that forward fold at the top of your mat. Coming into ragdoll, or maybe you come into another forward fold. So maybe you come into Pada Hastasana from the front when you slide your palms underneath the soles of your feet and grow your head down towards the earth. Or maybe you do something completely different. Your choice here, just melting your heart forward and down, your head down, if you're already in your forward fold. If you're still playing, let's take two more breaths there before you meet me in your forward fold. Let's go ahead, inhale, halfway lift, lengthen our forward fold. Exhale, bow. And then inhale, over one, dive all up, standing hands, coming to touch above your head. As you exhale, pull your hands down to your heart space. Tree pose here on the left. So let's root, grow down and root down and ground down into that right foot and call our left foot up somewhere on our right leg here. You can help it up into the inside of your thigh, that's okay. But like I said, you just don't want your left foot on your right knee joint, because that's dangerous. That's a danger zone. That's where you might blow out your knee, which isn't fun. I've done that, don't do that. And again, keep your hands at your heart, or roll your hands up towards that sky, hugging your belly button up and in. And just simply breathe. Let's go ahead, inhale, pull your left knee back to center, pull your hands to your heart, and you exhale, send your leg down and out. Good, and then inhale, swoop your hands up towards the sky, as you exhale, pull your hands down to your heart space, closing your eyes, reconnecting to your intention, reconnecting to your breath. Taking time to offer yourself gratitude, taking this time every day for yourself and to move. Taking time to release something from either on or off of your mat, that is no longer serving you. Taking time here to bask in your awesomeness. Maybe your hands float down by your sides and you arrive and ta-da, Sana. Just 
acknowledging how amazing you are. Standing here for a moment more, basking in your personal glory. Knowing you are perfect. And in this moment and in every other moment that follows and every other moment that preceded this one. I'm gonna go ahead and inhale, reach your hands all the way up towards the sky. Keeping your eyes open, closed, or maybe you open them. Exhale, swan dive forward, forward fold. Planting your hands down the mat, maybe you keep your eyes closed, maybe you open them. Let's wiggle, walk our big toes together into touch. And inhale, rise all the way up onto your tippy toes, keeping your thighs glued together, taking a breath in. And as you exhale, slowly lower your knees down towards the mat, coming into your toe stand. If this doesn't feel good on your knees, feel free just to take your knees down onto the mat here coming in to a stretch of the sole of your feet, which we will take in a second. Or maybe you keep the crown of your head going up towards the sky, hands resting on the mat, on your thighs, or maybe at your heart space. And then go ahead, let's take our knees. If they're on the mat, go ahead, pick them up just for a second. And let's splay our knees out and over towards, left knee goes to the left, right knee goes to the right. So we're coming into garland here up on our tippy toes. And your hands can come down to the mat, and we're not here for super long, okay? We're just taking this deeper hip stretch, because from here, we're going to bring our forearms down to the mat, okay? We're going to bring our knees back in, and our knees are going to bump into our triceps along the way, so they go from all the way out to in. They might even hit your triceps, so you might have to walk your arms out real quick, or lift your forearms up off the mat, and readjust. So now your triceps here are supporting your knees, because your knees are glued to your triceps. And if you don't like this, go back to that deep heel stretch with both knees down to the ground, or both knees on the ground, yeah. Or maybe you just come to a seated position. But if you want to play with baby crow, this is what we're setting up for. This is the setup for baby crow. And you want to know what you do from here? You shift your weight forward further up, and you lift those feet up off the ground. Okay? And that's all it is when it comes to baby crow. And notice how low I am to the ground. Try not to be that low. If you have short arms like me, I know it's hard. If you have longer arms, oh, I know this pose is probably so much easier for you. Because <laughs> if you have short arms like me, there's not a whole lot of space on your tricep for your knee and for your leg. And it's a lot, very low center of gravity, right? But well, you got this. It's also a lot of pressure on the back of your triceps, so just keep that in mind. So if you haven't tried baby curl yet and you want to give it a whirl, let's go. And if you've been trying baby curl and you're like, I'm done now, go ahead. Make your way to a comfortable seated position or that deep toe stretch. And we'll hang out here in curl or baby crow, excuse me. And if you want to try to go deeper, try lifting up your head and your sternum here and your chest a little bit, playing with that in between between your toes, floating up off the ground and your chest being nice and high. Well, and to come out, you can either take your toes down or my favorite way is just to slide my knees off of my elbows and plop down onto the mat. So that adds a little bit of humor to the pose. And in the next breath or two, go ahead, meet me with your toes tucked underneath you, and your knees down on the ground. Coming into this deep toe stretch, this deep quad stretch. If you're a runner, it's gonna be nice and juicy on those thighs, and also on the plantar fascia if you spend a lot of time on your feet. Just stretch out the backs of your heels here. Not really the backs of your heels, but more of the soles of your feet. Good, and then you take a big breath in as you exhale. Rock up onto your knees, keeping your toes tucked, or maybe you release the soles of your feet down from out. Let's plant our hands down and go ahead. Just tip tap, slap, whatever you wanted to call it. The sole, the tops of your feet down the mat. Returning blood to your shins if you lost it. Returning blood to your feet if you lost it with that. And then go ahead, either keeping your toes tucked or untucked. Walk your hands up towards your knees and come to stand on your knees. So we can take a quick camel. Because we've done a lot of twisting. We've done a lot of forward folding. Um, and so we should take this big bend, back bend back to really open up our hearts here because we've also done a lot of like scrunching forward and hunkering down towards the mat. Okay, so let's counter all of that. And so let's take our hands to our heart space here. And inhale, lift your chest up, lift your gaze up, lift your sternum up towards the sky as you begin to tilt your chest back and your head back. 
And you can stay here, this is the pose. Maybe your hands come to your lower back, fingers pointing down towards your bottom. Or maybe you lift your head and your sternum up a little bit more and drift your hands back towards your heels, either toes tucked or untucked here. Pressing your hips out in front of you, letting your head drift back as much as you want or need to here. Pretending like you're pressing your hips up against a wall. So you're not leaning back in your quads, it's an entire different thing. But your quads are making a wall and you fold back from your lower back. But it's not just your lower back that you're folding back up. You're lifting your sternum and your cervical spine and taking that back to find length there. So we're here in our deep back bend for three, two, one. Slowly come out of the pose, turn your chin towards your chest. Heels come to rest. Your bottom comes to rest on your heels, excuse me. You want to take a breath in as you exhale, bring your head back to neutral. And like I said, don't just bend back and twerk back from that lower back of yours. You want to lift your sternum up and you want to lift your head up and your neck up so that way you can find so much length and extension here and your thoracic and then your cervical spine. So that way you're just not here and then just like hovering back on your lower back. But you're lifting, 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 finding length and then taking it back. So let's go ahead and try one more camel here. Okay. And your hands can come down to your lower back to start if you want, or your hands can rest at your heart. I like this because it kind of gives me something to press my chest up into, okay? But your choice. Let's take a breath in, and as you exhale, begin to make your way into your pose by first lifting that sternum and your head up, and then letting your head and your sternum drifting back. Pointies po pinkies pointing out towards the sky with your hands resting on your sternum, and now hands are pointing down towards the mat behind you. Weird voice. Hands coming to your lower back for support or down to your heels, pressing your hips forward so they're pressing up against an imaginary wall or the actual wall. Coming into this pretty C space shape with your spine. C for camel pose. For five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, slowly come up by the pose. And as you exhale, tuck your chin towards your chest, heels come, or bottom comes to rest on your heels. And then go ahead, pull your head up towards the sky here. Let's plant our hands down on the mat. And then inhale, reach your right hand all the way up towards the sky. And as you exhale, let's take thread the needle. So bend into your left elbow, take your right arm long out on the mat here, gazing out and over towards your right hand. And as always, your left hand can rest on the mat, or it can reach up and around for your right hip. And just breathe, breathing length into that shoulder. And go take a big breath in as you exhale, slowly unwind, planting your left hand down. Inhale, reach your right hand up towards the sky. As you exhale, bring your right hand down to the mat. And then inhale, belly drops, gaze lifts. And as you exhale, round your back. Inhale, belly drops, gaze lifts. And as you exhale, round your back. And then go ahead and make your way back to neutral. And inhale, lift that left leg, or left arm, not your leg, your left arm all the way up towards the sky. As you exhale, bend into your right elbow, take that left arm long onto the mat. You either keep your right fingertips on the mat or tinted or reach your right hand up towards the sky and then reach it back and around for your left hip here. And again, simply breathe. And you're going to take an inhale and as you exhale, plant your right hand down and inhale. Reach your left hand all the way up towards the sky before you take it down onto the earth. And from here, let's leave our knees glued directly underneath our hips and begin to walk your hands out in front of you, coming into puppy pose, laying your forearms, your upper arms, and your chest down on the mat. Chin can rest if you're super open, or forehead can rest down on the mat like in child's pose here. And just breathe.
I'm gonna go take a breath and as you exhale, begin to walk your hands back up toward your knees, tabletop position. And let's sink our hips back towards our heels here. And either staying here, or maybe you shift your weight over your hips over to one side and you extend your legs out in front of you. And let's come into a crisscross applesauce position here. And you wanna take a sip of water, take a sip of water. I know we've done a lot of working class and I haven't offered a single water break. Because even with my class book, right here next to me with the class all printed out, I'm still too focused on not forgetting something. So I don't really queue for water. And from here, let's go ahead and take another gentle seated twist. So inhale, reach your hands all the way up towards the sky. As you exhale, take your right hand to the outside of your right knee, or to your left knee, excuse me, and plant your left hand back behind you. Taking a deeper twist here maybe, or maybe you don't twist as deeply. And then go ahead and inhale, and as you exhale, slowly unwind. Inhale, reach your hands all the way up. As you exhale, take your left hand to the outside of your right knee, planting your right hand behind you, and twist. Taking a big breath in, as you exhale, slowly unwind. And then inhale, reach your hands all the way up towards the sky. And as you exhale, let's, let's take this right hand down to the mat. And inhale, reach your left hand up towards the sky. And as you exhale, tilt it down and over towards the right side of your mat. And you can wiggle, walk your right hand really far out there if you want. You can even bring your right elbow down to mat to take this into a deeper stretch. And then inhale, and as you exhale, swoop your left hand down in front of you. Let your right hand follow, follow forward fold here in your seated position. And go ahead, take a breath, and as you exhale, walk your hands back up towards you. Good. And then inhale, sweep your hands up towards the sky. And as you exhale, take your left hand down onto the mat, reach your right hand up, and then tilt your right hand down and over to the right. Left elbow can come to rest on the mat if you want. Gazing up towards the sky here, your choice. And then inhale, and as you exhale, swoop that right arm out in front of you. Left hand's going to fall forward fold. Then take a breath, and as you exhale, walk your hands back up towards your knees. Grow the crown of your head up towards the sky. And from here, let's take our legs out, coming into a seated wide-legged forward fold here. So take your legs out to 45 degrees or longer, because we spent a lot of time today twisting right? And when we twist side to side, we want to make sure we take time to lengthen our spine forward and back, and then also side to side, because that twisting motion gets a different spinal movement than it does when we go like side to side or front and back like we did in our cat-cow. So go ahead, inhale, reach your hands up towards the sky. And as you exhale, let's take our right hand down onto our right leg, reaching our left hand up towards the sky before we take it down towards the right. And your right arm can rest here above your right leg or on top of it. Or if you want to take it deeper, you can bring your right arm into the inside, so the big toe edge of your right leg. And you can stay here. This is, this, this is the pose. Or maybe you reach, 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 and fold over until your left hand comes to touch down on your right foot. And you take this right hand of yours and wrap it around your right foot, gazing up underneath your left armpit. But like I said, right arm resting with on top of your right leg with your left arm just reaching up and over is perfectly fine. That is the pose. And it's more than perfectly fine. That is beautiful. That's where your body needs to be. So honor that. That's perfect. And then take a breath in. As you exhale, let's windmill this left arm out in front of you. Take your right hand down to the mat as well. Forward fold here. And you don't have to pancake down the mat if you don't want to. You can keep your hands nice and proud. Only draping your body as far down to the mat and the earth as you wish. Okay. So just come to where your body needs to be today. And go ahead and inhale. And as you exhale, walk your hands back up towards your body. Inhale, sweep your hands all the way up towards the sky. And as you exhale, let's take this left arm down and over to our left leg. Reaching our right hand up before we take it down and over. Gazing up underneath our right armpit here. And again, you can stay here, or maybe your left hand and left arm comes into the inside of your left leg. 
And then you reach, reach, reach your right arm up before it comes down to the mat. And just simply, again, breathe. Then go ahead and take a big breath in as you exhale. Swoop your right arm out in front of you. Swoop your left arm to follow. Then go ahead and take a big breath in as you exhale. Walk your hands back up towards your body. Let's take our hands to the back of our thighs. Lift up our legs. Wiggle, walk our feet back into mid line so the soles of our feet are resting on the mat here. Take your arms out in front of you, adjusting on your mat as you need to because we're going to make our way down onto our back. So take a big breath in as you exhale, slowly slink your roll all the way down to the earth, vertebrae upon vertebrae, crash or land. Take your arms on back behind you, let the soles of your feet come together, let your knees fall out like book pages, Supta Baddha Konasana. Beginning to melt down into your mat here. Beginning to let your breath become natural and easy. Beginning to let go of your practice. Let go of all of your thoughts. Maybe one hand comes to rest on your heart, the other hand comes to rest on your belly. And then stay here for as long as you wish, or maybe you begin to make your way towards your final Shavasana. Growing your legs out long, taking your arms wherever you wish. Take whatever shape you wish here for your final Shavasana. As you close your eyes or keep them closed here. Knowing there's no definition for the shape of Shavasana, but it's more so the definition of where your mind goes. Coming into that space in between dreamfulness and wakefulness. As your breath becomes natural and easy. And your thoughts begin to drift away. You feel your body begin to relax and melt down into the earth here. Your ankles sway out to the sides. Your shoulder blades draw down your back and away from your ears. Feel a smile draw across your face. So all your facial muscles relax. As your tongue floats away from the roof of your mouth. As the teeny tiny muscles that move your eyes relax. Feel your palms become heavy. You simply sit here and melt. Now this is where I leave you in your final Shavasana, your final pose of rest. And stay here as long as you need to, soaking up the goodness of your practice and everything that is offered you today. Remembering to take it slow at the beginning, at the end of at the end of your Shavasana as you begin to call wakefulness and attention back into your body. Being kind to yourself for just a little while longer, stay here. As always, it was an honor to teach. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope you had fun playing with me today. The inner light in me sees and honors that same light that's in you. Namaste.